The phrase natural horsemanship is synonymous with Pat Pirelli. I talk with Pat and his wife Linda at their Pirelli Across Australia demonstration day for an insider's point of view on their training methods. Pat, welcome to Australia and welcome to Horse Talk TV. Thanks for taking the time to talk to oh, us. Oh, my pleasure. Pat, tell me how you became a horse trainer. What was your journey? Actually, my journey went from being a cowboy to a horse trainer, from a horse trainer to a horseman. Because Mr. Troy Henry, the man that really inspired me, he said, don't try to be a horse trainer. He said, they're just mechanics. They hurry up and do what the owners want. He said, but a horseman would only do what a horse would want. If with horses, the first thing you've got to have is kindness. Second thing you got to have is you got to have control. And then after that, you have to quit being chauvinistic. We have to quit being autocratic. We have to quit being anthropomorphic, which means putting human thoughts into animals' actions. And the last thing we got to be is we've got to quit being linear thinkers. We've got to be lateral thinkers. We've got to become puzzle solvers. What's natural horsemanship? Um, what's the difference between someone who's natural or not natural? Well, that's a really good question. First of all, Horsemanship can only be natural. It's a natural phenomenon that the ultimate predator and the ultimate prey animal can become partners. So it can only be natural. It's actually really shouldn't have to be used like that. You shouldn't have to say natural horsemanship. But unfortunately today, there's so many artificial forms, people using force, fear, and intimidation with horses, using gadgets, using all kinds of things to get horses to do things. Now I'm gonna put my chi here and see if I can get him to back. And it's not about wiggling this rope. It's about me having that energy that's pushing him back. And we've all got this in us, but your chi also has an attracting chi. It's like, okay. So Pirelli is definitely not anti-contact then, as far as not contact on the, on, the, on the bit or the mouth. We're anti-pulling, <laughs> we're anti-seesawing, we're anti-jerking and yanking and bopping and all of that, but most people don't know there's another way, and that's where I was. So I'm not saying this about anybody that I haven't done myself. That was me. I had every gadget on my horse's head, tying it down, closing, you know, I was, I was a regular at the tax store. I had draw reins, I had a running martingale, I had a market harbour. Now I can do it all quite naturally, and it doesn't have to be in a halter. I can do it in a halter, but I can also do it in a bit, and my horse is not afraid of my hands, I, you know, it, that's really what it is. There's a natural way to do this, and it involves love, language, and leadership. Most people only have love, or they only have leadership. They don't have all three. The opposite of natural is traditional. That the reason that people do what people do is because other people do it. And that's what most people do, is they're doing what, what makes sense to humans. What I'm trying to do is get people to understand, look at it from the horse's horse point of view, and wear, walk in those horses' horseshoes. And just, this is where chauvinism comes in our lives. So often we think the animals are they're inferior or we're more superior or something. People are creating uh, dysfunctional relationships in their, with their horses at all times. You see the way people go out and capture their horses. They treat horses not like partners but like prisoners. That's the sound of the partnership side of the brain because this is the noise that horses make when they've run for their lives and they've made it back to the herd and they didn't get eaten. That's is there harmony in marriage with other horse disciplines, for example, dressage, eventing? How would that fit within the frame of natural horsemanship? Well, first of all, um, if you think of the word horsemanship, it means the habits and skills that humans and horses both need to become partners. So horsemanship is the cake, the icing on the cake. That's, what, that's all that the sports are. So it's not uh, one thing and another. People get confused about the difference between natural horsemanship and dressage. This is the foundation. Linda, horsenality. Yes. What is horsenality? And I, I understand you came up with the term, is that correct? I didn't actually. Pat came up with the term, you know, people would talk about their horse's personality. And Pat would say, there are no personalities. People have personalities. Horses have horsenalities. And when she gets there, she's going to wait. Don't let it go past. Back her up and point that nose to it again. And pretty soon the horse goes, oh, my leader has a purpose. The horse that I came to Pat with was a right brain extrovert. That means extrovert wants to move its feet, right brain fearful. And the horse that I have now, Rema, is a left brain introvert. He's like the absolute opposite. So he's self-confident, doesn't use any more energy than he needs to. But it doesn't mean that he's lazy. He's unmotivated and he's the leader. So as long as he calls the shots, everything's fine. And so what you tend to want to do is pluck him up, you know, touch him with a, a stick or well, that doesn't work with left brain introverts. 
you touch them with a stick and they say, well, look at how I can buck you off. On the outside, it looks like nothing's happening. Inside, it's very fast. So you learn then to get to an introvert's mind and then they'll give you their feet. An extrovert, you gotta get to their feet and they'll give you their mind. When, when a horse licks its lips, that's the first sign that it's, its brain is starting to become more left brain instead of right brain. She's operating out of her right brain. And also, when I did get an extrovert, I suddenly started to know. Use that kind of strategy for that horse. Use this strategy for that horse. And some people go, well, this is just what we do. This is the program, that's how you do it. Well, that's why there's a lot of failures in horses. The horses that'll fit that program, fit it. But 80% of them usually don't. We actually, in our courses, we run horsonality and personality because we show how, if your horsonality is opposite to your personality, how you clash and what you need to do to change yourself in order to get on with that horse better. And of course, as a horseman, you need to be able to get on with every kind of horsonality.